evening. I'm Rob Frecker, your host for Wrestler Roundup Fall 2010 Edition. Tonight, we will look back on the fall sports season as we interview coaches, look at some highlights, and end with some in-studio analysis from our reporting team. Join us as we review football, water polo, soccer, and women's volleyball. But first, let's check in with our athletic director, Al Gasparian. John McNichols had the chance to talk to him to get his take on the entire fall sports spectrum. Well, Al, it's hard to believe, but another semester is drawing to an end at Golden West College. Let's take a few moments to recap this first semester in athletics at Golden West. Okay, um, it, it, it just flew by. It just seems like a few days ago we were sitting out there doing the pre preseason interview, but um, we had a very successful fall. You know, football, we were a little bit disappointed. We thought we were going to get in a bowl game. We finished six and four, but, you know, overall, I think that program just continues to improve and, you know, we've won a lot of games towards the end of the season the last two years. So, you know, beating Orange Coast pretty handily was a very good start and um, it was for homecoming. And, um, you know, next year we're going to try to get off to a little bit quicker start and hopefully things will keep improving. Uh, men's water polo lost a real tough one in the state finals, but they played great. Both water polo programs are always successful and, um, you know, just they just continue to roll and didn't quite happen at the state championship this year, but next year we'll have a great chance and then the rest of sports men's and women's soccer had good year we've got a new women's soccer coach who's you know i think that program's poised to be great next year or within keep moving upward and then cross country women's volleyball had a little bit of a disappointing finish losing in the first round of the playoffs but you know they'll be back next year and you now the fall was actually overall a very good fall semester now the second semester start playing games end of january first part of february how do the spring sports look at this point? I think I think very very good. Uh, baseball has a lot of returners, and they've been they had a pretty decent season last year. And um, you know they're looking; they've got guys back, and Bird always does a great job coaching, so they'll be very very solid. Um, softball, we're hoping has a little bit better results, but they're solid every year, every season. And men's and women's swimming will be up there in the state. And men's volleyball, I think, has you know they've got a new coach full time now, not full time, but back from last year and um, you know hopefully they'll be very very solid and they just peek in my head in the gym they look pretty good and then track we've got just more probably track athletes than we've had that I can ever remember and you know they look at least you know just looking at them they look like they're very athletic and should be very successful well and every good department needs a good leader Albert thank you for the work you do and continued success thanks John and thank you you're welcome Time now for a look at the women's volleyball team. They suffered an up and down season, and Victor Cespedes has the story. Coach, you had a great start in the Orange Empire Conference. You guys came out hot 4-0. Oh. Mm -hmm. The rest of the way, you guys went 1-3. and three. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we, uh, I think we did have a good start. Um, unfortunately, one of our starting outside hitters had a uh, season-ending ankle sprain okay. um, early in the season. And... Um, so that had a big uh, effect on the on the rest of the team. It pushed a couple of players, maybe that were on the bench or in a different role, into a into a starting role. Uh, which returning players will be returning? It was one of the injured players going to be mm -hmm. returning. What do you expect for next season? You know, I think uh, we're going to have a really strong team. I had three players redshirting this year. One's a setter, an outside hitter, and also an opposite hitter, um, who could have played for us this year. But due to eligibility, they, they weren't allowed to. I see. But, uh, yeah, we have some really strong returners. Chaffee, who was a starting outside hitter for us this year. And um, our libero's coming back. We have a couple of defensive specialists coming back as well. And hopefully, uh, you know, if I can do, do my job as a coach and get some good players in here recruiting-wise, um, we'll be uh, real strong for next season. And, Coach, let's touch base on the playoffs. Uh, you guys ended up playing Orange Coast College in mm -hmm. the first round. You had an early exit. Can you right. just tell – I know the injuries, but was it just a, your team wasn't able to gel together or the chemistry wasn't there due to that injury? What, what was but that all about? No, I mean, there's always going to be injuries. It's just something you plan for as a coach. Um, in the junior college ranks, you don't have as much depth as maybe an NC2A school would. Um, sure. But uh, so no excuses. Um, we had opportunities to beat uh, Orange Coast for sure. And uh, in fact, we were up in every single game and we just didn't execute is the bottom line. Um, our chemistry was okay. I felt, um, you know, we could obviously train harder. 
um, had a little bit better desire to win in the in the matches. Um, but it just basically comes down to execution, and uh, we failed to execute in the in the playoffs. Yeah, Coach. Well, we saw your team come back late in a lot of the sets, and we we believe that they were always trying to fight, and it just seemed like they just didn't gel well together. Uh, is that what you kind of saw, or? No, you know. In fact, uh, you know, I've coached over 25 years now as a head coach, head collegiate coach, and the girls believed in each other. It really just came down to execution, as far as them getting along and everything on and off the court. They were a great group to work with, um, and it just came down to to failing. And usually, you can judge a player a third in practice, a third how they play in the game, and a third of how they play in the game under pressure. And when we were under pressure, we tended to fail. Well, well Coach, I, I expect big things for next season. Your team was very exciting to watch, and at times we, we expected this team to go really far into the playoffs. We saw them. They're a much bigger team than a lot of the teams we saw them against. And uh, we look for a brighter future next season, and I want to thank you for being here on, thank you. on this school day. So thank you very it. much, Coach. You. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Time now for some postseason football analysis. Our John McNichols had a chance to talk to head coach Nick Mitchell. Let's take a look. Coach, another six and four season. Tell us a little bit about how this season went. Well, you know, we, uh, we actually thought that we'd start off pretty good. We had some good veterans coming back. But, um, you know, it, it didn't work out like we wanted. You know, we stumbled the first game against Long Beach. Um, and then uh, kind of went and made up for it at Glendale. But then we had two tough ones coming up, which we knew, uh, Fullerton and El Camino. So we wanted to go into those games 2-0. and We didn't. We went 1-1 one and, one, um, and then uh, lost both of those next two, which we knew they were going to be tough to win. Um, we ended up winning. The El Camino went late because of a technicality. But, um, you know, it, it was – we thought that we could easily split. We wanted to end up, then we had Harbor before we started conference. We know Harbor would be a, a good team. Um, they ended up ranked top 10 and we had to go to their place. Um, but the players bounced back well um, and we beat Harbor at their house, which was a good uh, omen going into the conference play. And, um, you know, we, I think we had two really good teams in our conference with Santa Ana and Riverside. Uh, we played them both tough. Uh, but we were kind of getting going. We had finally made a quarterback change uh, late in the season, about halfway through the season, um, because we did have some issues with that for the first part, and uh, kind of got on a roll there a little bit. You know, we were we had a couple of good tough games uh, against Santa Ana and the Riverside, but then got on a roll, won three straight, and um, finished strong. Do you think that's going to help you recruiting the local high school players? Uh, now that it seems like you have a handle on Orange Coast? Well, uh, the handleable part is debatable because it's our, our first win in a few years against them. But, we, you know, it was, it was a good win for us, um, and uh, it'll only help. It definitely won't hurt us. Uh, it, you know, we go after the same kids. We play in the same stadium. Um, whoever wins, I mean, it's definitely an edge up. And uh, I think the way we won as well, um, will hopefully roll over into recruiting and give us uh, some good help. Tell me what you do at halftime uh, that seems to make that happen. Well, we work really hard throughout the week to get a fast start at the beginning of the game. And oftentimes, you know, especially this season, it's been disappointing that we've started slow, um, in a few games in particular, and, you know, you kind of go in and you regroup at halftime and then you come back out. But I, I think that we do, I think that we do as good of a job as anybody's preparing the kids through the week to be ready to go from the kickoff, that first kickoff. Uh, but, you know, we don't always get that out of the team, um, out of the coaches, whatever it may be. But, you know, what we do at halftime is we go in there and it really is just kind of a time to regroup because... Adjustments are being made continually throughout the game, as you know. Um, from the first series to the last series, adjustments are happening on the sidelines and out on the field. I mean, as the kids come out, you know, come off on the sideline and talk to us, we're making adjustments from what we see from the sidelines and up top. We're making adjustments off of that. When we go in at halftime, 
basically it, it's a chance for the coaches to kind of take a breather, sit together and talk about what we're seeing, what we're having trouble stopping, what we need to stop, what we can exploit. But it's really the same things that we're doing throughout. But during the first half of the game, I mean, it's pretty chaotic. And you can't really sit down and, and think clearly a lot of times. The halftime does give us a chance to do that. It gives us a chance to sit down with the players, clear their heads, talk about, again, reinforce what's important, what we need to do to be successful, what we need to stop, what we can take advantage of. Get the kids to regroup, get the coaches to regroup, come out the second half, and uh, keep going. Play some football. How does it look for our Golden West players getting recruited to move on to play somewhere at the next level? It looks pretty good. Um, uh, as always, a lot depends on the academics. Um, you know, the briefly, you know, a Division Two, II, Division Three, NAI type of player, they don't need to get an AA degree. They can just go with their 12 transferable units and all. But those who want to go Division One or have the opportunity to go Division One, they do need that AA degree or they had to be a qualifier out of high school. So um, we've probably got uh, four, five or so kids that are getting looked at by Division One schools, only one of which was a qualifier out of high school. So the other four or so still need to get their AA degree. Uh, we stress all along, I mean, it's going to come down to the academics. Yes. I just want to say one last thing. We've, uh, it's kind of unique. We've got two kids playing in national championship games this year. Uh, Dustin Uyeta, who was our starting center last year, will be playing in the NAIA national championship for Sioux Falls this Saturday. And then uh, Lavage LT2NA, uh, will be starting a wide receiver for the Oregon Ducks in the national championship game. It doesn't get much better than that. No, it's great. It's great. Again, Coach, congratulations. Thank you for all you do. Keep up the good work. Thanks, John. Thank you. Time now to head to the soccer fields. Our very own Mario Poblete had a chance to talk to head soccer coach Alex Jimenez. Let's take a look. How you doing, Alex? Uh, you have a great year. But is this, you, this was your first year in Golden West. Did you enjoy it coaching this team? Um, I started enjoying joining the team once we started winning some games. It was it was hard at the beginning, but uh, it was a good good group of kids. How you were able to keep the team focused after a such bad start? You didn't win again the first eight games. I think you didn't win any game. But uh, how was how was the team able to keep together? Uh, it was uh, it was not as difficult as it sounds. It was a good group of kids. They knew we had the talent. We knew we had the talent. It was just about putting it together. It was a little bit harder because we, I had so many new kids coming into the program that they needed to learn how to win together. Uh, but do you think this team could have done more this year? Well, I, th I think we could have done a lot better, yes. And I think the kids uh, felt that way. And it is one of the things that kept us together was that we could believe in, in the team. We saw the talent. We knew how hard we worked at practice. Um, all we needed is a little bit of luck, and once we, that changed a little bit, plus the hard work, um, I think the results started coming by themselves. Alex, what happened uh, last week of the year? I mean, you, yeah, I know you lost a top game in the Urban Valley, but what happened in Riverside? Why, what happened with the scheduling conflict there? Um, we had the, uh, well, the most important game in that week was Urban Valley, like you said, and we needed to win that game for us to make the playoffs. And we did it. We, we were up 2-0 and then uh, gave t three goals toward the end. And that cost us the playoffs. But uh, our last game at Riverside, it was a conflict. We, we had it at 3 o'clock. They had it at 1 o'clock. And because being the last game, we couldn't, we couldn't make it up. Mm. Alex, uh, what do you think? Do you think this team is going to be a much better next year? Or you think it's going to – you need to – Focus in much better to have a better start. Um, I think, I think that I learned quite a bit being my first year as a head coach uh, about preparing the kids for the preseason. And I think the coaching staff and myself, we, we sat around and had a uh, many different arguments and talks about how to how to do that. And I think we're going to have a, a very good plan to have these kids uh, winning the first game and, and having a, a great season from the preseason. Mario also had the chance to chat with some players. Let's take a look at the first one as he talks to freshman defender David Navarro. What were your expectations coming out to Golden West? 
my expectations were just to have a good season and to see whether or not I would leave from this to a better college or... Do you think the coach community did a good job keeping you together to not lose a focus, not be desperate, uh, to keep fighting for a win? The coach did, did really good to do that. He motivated us, Sean motivated us, Alex motivated us to just do better and just work harder at doing it. Mark, you let so many points escape in many key games, maybe two games against Sanana, you were leading both games by 2-0 and you get you lost one by 3-2 and then the other one was a tie and you have a couple home tie games. You think those points came and helped the team to not make the playoffs at the end? Yeah, it would help the team if we would have won, if we would have had a better start during those games. But other than that, those team, those points were crucial for us. What do you think you need to improve for next year to be much better? I think we need to improve by winning our preseason and not worrying about other teams losing for us to go playoffs. Let's take a look at the second interview with freshman captain David Massena. What brought you to go to West College, David? Well, my club coach... Sean Dick is the assistant coach here, so he kind of convinced me to come here instead of go to OCC since I live in Huntington Beach, and I just thought that the team was a lot better here than OCC. Okay, David. Um, how hard was it for you to win a starting spot in the team? Um, it was pretty difficult. I mean, I had to prove myself to the coach being a freshman, and uh, but my assist the assistant coach knew me pretty well. It was just a matter of beating out other people for starting playing center back. David, what factors led to the team a slow start early in the year? Um, a big thing was the chemistry, I think. I mean, a lot of us didn't really know each other. It was kind of like separated in a way, and we kind of had to gel, and it wasn't working out in the beginning. The first few games, we were just not together, not as a family. How do you explain the team played great against team with much better record than you guys. I mean, you play against Sanana, you tie both t lose one by one goal and tie. You talk about Cerritos, you lose by three goals, but you were talking about the they were a much better team, but you were playing one on one. How you can explain that, David? I think it's just that we we tend to step to the level of the other teams that we play, and it's it's a fine line between playing great playing a great game and just playing a horrible game and the warm-up is important every factor going into the game your mentality and a lot of the times we knew that there was a lot of pressure and we went in there like strong and we came out with a good result you need to improve to me a much better player next year personally i just need to work on my confidence and communication to the other players i felt i was a little uh out of the whole group because they're all uh I was new, so I mean, but next year, my communication, I can get it up and we'll have a great year next year. Golden West men's water polo ended their season in the typical place, but in an atypical fashion. Making their 28th appearance in the state finals game, the wrestlers came up just a bit short to Northern California rivals West Valley. I had a chance to talk about that game and the entire season with head coach Scott Taylor. Coach Taylor, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. No problem. We'll get to the state championship in a minute, but uh, my first question for you, how do you measure the success of a season? I think, I think the success of a, our season or our seasons has been, you know, where do we start um, with a group of individuals that are from all different programs and to where we end up, you know, uh, what, what, how we uh, play our first game uh, to how we end in our, our final game. Uh, did we make progress? Uh, were our student athletes uh, making you know pr progressions on a on a positive note? Um, and then you know doing our best the last game of the season. So from where we started to where we ended, uh, just to see the progression in 14, 15 weeks um, of us getting better each day, every day, and, and utilizing our time properly uh, in practices and games, and and you know trying to play our best on that last game of the season. And going back to that last game of the season in the state final against West Valley, a team you know very well. Take us there for a minute. Tell us what happened. It was, it was, we went through a lot of adversity, and I was very proud of our team on uh, where we ended up. Uh, we did fall short of, of our ultimate goal of winning a state championship, but uh, West Valley was a very experienced team, a little bit older than us. Uh, this, this is, the environment was a lot of adversity. I mean, it was probably 38 degrees out. 
Uh, we're not used to cold weather, pouring down rain, uh, cold, fog. Um, you know, that's not an excuse, but at the same time, our, our guys, we, we were up four to three at halftime, and I believe we were down, so we were right in the game where we wanted to be, and we were seven to six uh, going in the fourth quarter, and we ended up losing by a couple goals. But I was very proud of our team on, from where we started to where we ended, and we knew we had to play the perfect game on the last day, and, you know, I felt we played about three and a half quarters of, of a perfect game. We were just missing about a two or three minute period there where they went on a little run and goal, scored two or three goals and we weren't able to, you know, counter react and, and come back and score. But I'm really proud of our team, a young team. And, and you know, we, 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 we got to the final game and that's always the goal to get to the final game, have the opportunity the last day of the season and the last game to be there and try to bring another state championship to Golden West. Seems like you two teams, you and West Valley, tend to meet up quite a bit, and it's always a contentious affair. You did meet them twice this season. What were you anticipating going into this game, the final game? I, uh, kind of what we got. You know, they they were probably bigger uh, physically than us, a little little quicker than we were. Um, but you know, our guys, we, just a, another battle. I mean, they we've played them so many times over the years. This year, we split with them. Uh, we beat them early in the season. They beat us in our tournament here. And, um, you know, we, we, were, we were there. Our team, I thought we were uh, well-conditioned. I thought we had a, a clear game plan of, of how to beat them. And, again, we, I, in my opinion, played a good game for three and a half quarters. We had them where we wanted to, which is we had them uncomfortable. Uh, you know, they're comfortable winning, 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 and, and being ahead of most of their opponents. And we had them, um, I thought, where we wanted them. And, again, about a three-minute period in the – third quarter that they were able to, you know, score two or three goals and we couldn't overcome it. Um, but we, we put a hundred percent effort into it and I'm, I'm proud of our kids and our, our students. Sounds like they made a good effort there. You, you are one of the few junior colleges to schedule uh, competitive games with four year universities. What do you aim to get out of those games? Well, I think, I think it's, it's a couple things. Number one, I think it's a, a good opportunity for our student athletes to see what it's like to physically at the next level. Um, that you got to continue to improve physically in the weight room, in the pool, you got to get faster, you got to get stronger. So when we were able to go play these teams, it kind of gives our, our athletes more motivation uh, to come back and work harder. Uh, so it's there, and then to be able to go onto a campus of a four year university and see the environment, you know, the, the bigger stands, the, the, they, you know, there's a lot more people, the, the whole situation. I think it's a great. A selling point for student athletes to come to our school is hey, being in contact with these four year schools, they'll allow us to come in and play. Not only that, it allows those coaches to recruit our athletes. You know, they're able to see how do they play against their players. Um, how do we hold up? Are we physically, tactically, mentally tough? Are we, you know, where are we at? But I think it's a great opportunity for, for us and, you know, for a four year coach to recruit our athletes to see how they, you know, we fare up against their players. Have any of your uh, students been able to been? Recruited this this term? Yeah, uh, last year I think we had all, we had all six sophomores go to four year schools uh, this year. So we're really you know that's the ultimate goal is is matriculation of our student athletes. You know to help them get to the next level. I mean, come to Golden West for a couple of years, we can uh, help you get to the four year school of your choice. Um, so this year, yeah, we have sophomores that are being recruited right now by Loyola, UC San Diego, uh, just to name a Concordia, uh, UC Davis, to name a few. Um, but but we're pretty much freshman heavy this year, so we've only got you know uh, we got about seven or eight sophomores, but the majority of our team was freshmen. Now you have some freshmen. You also said you redshirted about six or seven guys in preparation for next year. Tell me a little bit about the uh, prospects for next season. Well, right now today we had a meeting with our guys that are returning, and that's one heck of a water polo team sitting in there. So uh, you know, add a, add a few new faces uh, out recruiting actively now. Um, for different positions and, you know, add some new guys to the, to the mix and get a good freshman core and, and they can come in and learn from the sophomores that, are, that they'll be next year. And that's, you know, how we've continued to be successful, to bring in good players that learn from our second-year players, second-year players move on to, you know, uh, four-year universities, and then the freshmen are able to, you know, get significant playing time as well here and, and, and do well. So successful program always. Well, thank you for taking the time. No Coach problem. Taylor. No and problem. Good luck next season. No problem. Well, we've heard the coaches' opinions and thoughts. Now, time for our own. I'm Rob Frecker, your host for Russell Roundup Fall 2010.
Joining me now in the studio is our panel of experts. Let's start first with Victor Cespedes, John McNichols, and Mario Poblete. Gentlemen, let's get started first with volleyball. Victor, a phrase I keep hearing to describe the team is, we thought they were better. Can you describe where that mentality comes from? Well, Rob, as we talked to the coach earlier, I got the sense that, you know, he expected more out of his players. This is obviously a talented crew. You saw this team, they were above six feet. All those women during the interviews, they just towered us. So, uh, like he said, they had a couple in injuries, key injuries, and, you know, we, we look for a uh, better ne uh, next season to that. There was a, you tried to get out of him, that little bit of gelling issue, and I know that you and I talked a little bit about that. It never seemed like they were playing as a full team unit during the entire season. Yeah, like, I asked them if there was a, a chemistry issue, and he said no. They, he said that they were fine off the court, on the court. I believe maybe that they, they tried to make it seem like they were fine chemistry-wise, but they were always a little bit late getting to those digs, just a little bit late, a little bit confused, a little bit... The reaction just didn't seem that it was there, at, like the previous uh, team from last season that had Risco and Maritza Montes, so... Yeah. I expect, like, like I said, I expect a better season for them next year. Well, as you pointed out as well, a lot of the other teams just looked a little bit more athletic, even though some of them were a little bit smaller. Yeah, yeah, like we saw, we saw Fullerton, we saw Cypress. I mean, these girls were just five foot five, and our team was, like I said, over six feet tall. And uh, you know, their effort was there. And like Coach said, sometimes he thought the effort wasn't there. And again, we'll see what happens next season, Rob. And speaking about effort, Coach, I'll put this one to you. You've coached many ju junior college players in the past. You can only do so much in preparation. What do you have to expect for your players to do on game day? Oh, well, you always want your players to rise to the occasion. We saw the volleyball girls from the beginning of the year to the end, and I think we all had very high expectations at the beginning of the year, and I know Coach Lawler did. He also told me early on in the year he thought he would have a better squad next year but that this was a more talented squad than we've had here for a while. It seemed to me, being a fan, and uh, we observed the girls play several times, other teams got better as the season went along. Uh, Golden West sort of plateaued and didn't seem to get much better. Now that may have something to do w with what the potential of the players was. We might have assumed the potential was for them to continue to get better. Perhaps they peaked a little early, and we don't. We can't lose sight of the fact the best women's volleyball in the state of California is played right here within 10 miles of where we sit. So these girls played good teams every week. And one of the problems you have with a team on any sport is mental attitude. And I think once they were defeated by some of the teams that they thought they were going to win, they might have lost that competitive edge that brings you through in that fourth or fifth set. Um, we all expected them to be better. But I don't think we can lose sight of the fact they do play. Cypress won the state. They're a good team. Uh, they're they're a good team. They play a very high caliber of team every game. One of the things I like that Coach Lawler said in the interview was that you can judge a player a third during practice, a third during game, and a third during those tough games. Right. And it seemed that that was when the team seemed to crumble a little bit. They were within striking distance on quite a few occasions uh, in specific games and just couldn't put kind of close it out. Well, that's a good observation. We all saw that. Mario, we both saw some games for the men's and the women's. Let's uh, talk first about the men's side. Uh, a really tough way to finish the season uh, in kind of controversial terms. They looked like they were going to make the playoffs, but practically a scheduling error. They went out to Riverside expecting a 3 o'clock kickoff. The game was at 1. They had to forfeit, and just like that, they're out of the playoffs. Yeah, I, I was able to talk with Alex Jimenez you know, a couple of days ago, and he was very upset with... Riverside, um, the administration part got scrubbed, and they couldn't make the game, but it was the last game of the year, Rob. They couldn't make out the game. They got out, uh, as you say, not only that, they had a rod start beginning of the year. They didn't win a game the first 10. They went in a run. They didn't lose a game for 10 games stake. I think they didn't lose a single game. They won five in a row, and they have an emotional game in OCC, as you, you say. They have the big Road Victory and Irving Valley, and they have a couple of players coming back next year. It's going to be a pretty lovely team, Rob. I believe they can make a run next year. We saw the game, and we covered the game against Irvine Valley here, where just at the end of the game, it seemed like they had things wrapped up. 
And just like that, two goals put in by Irvine Valley very late in the game, one in stoppage time, and they come out with a 3-2 defeat. Uh, Rob, the coach was very safe. They lost control of that game. He was very confident they, w they would take the victory. I mean, they dominated that game, Rob. We saw it. They kept a Russell out of the box. They couldn't do anything with Russell. Russell had one chance and he scored, but the next, after that, he didn't do anything. And their secondary players scored. You saw it. And Gonovitz had a chance to put the game away like three times, and we were very upset at the end. They were very upset. And maybe that influence in the forfeit, they didn't check out their schedule, maybe because they thought, oh, we're going to go to Riverside and win that game easily and don't check it out their schedule. I think a lot of fingers are being pointed at, at different schools. Riverside, of course, blaming Golden West administration for not getting the right time, but it's just an unfortunate way to end the season. Mar, I want to ask you about the women's side. You saw a few of their games. They put three wins together. Normally we would scoff at that, but that's actually a big improvement compared to last year. How's the new coach fitting in? Uh, he's happy to be here, let me tell you. He's confident he's going to turn the team around. I was able to talk with him a couple of weeks ago. He's now recruiting, trying to get more players. And even, even told Rob, let me tell you, they have a lot of injuries. They have like 10 players injured. And he was honest to say that if he didn't have that many injuries, they would fight for a playoff spot. Unfortunately, you know, in soccer, you need to be deep. You need to players to come out the bench and help. And it's a, that's what I like the, about college soccer. You, you can make as many changes as you can. He wasn't able to make the changes. He had the 14 players in the roster. He had to put 11 starting. He had only three changes. He couldn't do anything with 14 players. And let me tell you, three victories is huge. And they won some, they won a huge game. I remember over there, Santiago Canyon, one of the best teams in the women's soccer that beat them up 6-1. And I was impressed with that. But they need to work on a little bit. I just say it's improvement, but hopefully very things are coming out for the women's team. They definitely got a little bit of momentum, and it's going to be all about recruiting and getting some more local players because, as John said, with women's volleyball, women's soccer, very much the same. The high schools in the very local strong, area produce some very good players. If we can bring some of them here to Golden West, that program will soon be back on the rise. Well, let's take a look now at water polo. Talk about high expectations. The men's side, coming off two concurrent state championships, we saw them right here last year. The women's side, as well, winning the state championship last year. Have we set the bar too high for this water polo program? Well, I don't think the coach would tell you that. Uh, we've talked about it now for three or four years. Early in the season, we know that first day, they're thinking about this, how to get ready for the state championship game. And water polo is one of those sports in the state of California that a lot of schools have dropped the program. So the better teams play each other in tournaments up and down the state. Everybody knows who's good. Uh, Golden West has a tremendous record in men's and women's water polo. Yeah, the coach sets the bar high and they took second this year. And we know he said that yeah, was a good season and they did the best they could for three and a half quarters in that championship game. We also know Coach Taylor is thinking about, let's get back in the water as soon as possible and start next year. The bar is high, they're gonna keep it high. Yeah. West turn, and I believe, and we'll have to wait and see, but I believe that that victory, and it was a decisive victory against our inner district rival, will be a big factor in local players deciding where to go to have an opportunity to play their one or two years at the community college level and move on to the four year level. And we sit in the middle of some very fine high school football programs. So I, I believe the job that Coach Nick Mitchell has done uh, at Golden West, making a program that was pretty average for quite a long time, one of the stronger programs, bowl eligible last year and won the bowl, missed bowl eligibility this year, probably by a bad call in the Long Beach City game, the first game of the year. Players are gonna to wanna to come to, to here to play. And as long as Coach Nick Mitchell sticks around, and we hope that's a long time. I believe the Golden West program is in very good hands. Yeah, Victor, speaking of recruiting, I saw guys on the roster this year from Edison, from Los Alamitos, from uh, Huntington Beach, from uh, Fountain Valley. Some really good local schools. And modern day. Modern day, modern even. Day. Really good local schools that are now choosing, hey, what's up with this Golden West College wrestler team? Well, like you said, I mean, Nick Mitchell has a great a great uh, system here. He, he loves the trick plays. He loves the deep ball. So when you have players from those caliber of schools, I mean, they want the deep ball. They want that out route, you know? 
And like like we've said, we have players that are now going to Oregon and are playing at, at the big stage. You know, they're going to be competing in this year's bowl game. So when you see that kind of thing, you're going to have players coming here and just taking a peek and saying, hey, what's that all about? You know, I wonder how much the restructuring a few years back has played into it now in its, uh, what, third, fourth year? Well, this was the third year. Um, the state of California determined that the winners kept winning and the losers kept losing. So three years ago, they went on a rotating two-year basis and put teams in brackets with teams that had similar win-loss records for the last 10 years. Uh, Golden West did very well with that bracketing last year, tied for the conference championship and did play in a bowl and won it. Uh, then this year, it's rebracketed. So this year's season and next year's season in football will be the same, and then it gets reevaluated. But for everybody in the state, the people at the top and the people at the bottom, I think it's been a very good thing for the state to do to preserve football in some schools that might have been ready to give it up. He has leadership, Rob. That's a good thing about Coach Mitchell since he came here to one of us. The team won two games the year before, they went six and four the la these last two years. He has done a great job recruiting, going so far like Florida, going and recruiting receivers. I mean, he's everywhere. He's trying to bring, res bring, bring a championship here, hopefully. It's going to be hard, as you say. They have Ailey Harbour in the conference. They have Orange Coast that didn't have a good year. We won the bird game after four years, I believe. And the future looks bright, Robert. Rob. Certainly does. The tide may be turning here for Golden West. Well, and uh, around the state, I talked to a lot of community college coaches. I coached community college football for about 15 years. Uh, Golden West was one of the other teams that people didn't talk about. It used to be very strong, got in the middle of the road to below, but uh, the last three years especially, people are taking a note at what's going on at Golden West. That has an awful lot to do with Nick Mitchell and the staff that he has put together. And I, at this point, we talked off camera about his staff. It looks like the staff is intact again for next year. Community college football, you, you coach just like in all the sports, but especially in football where you have so many players, 11 each way, plus special teams, you have to rebuild every year. Uh, you like those sophomores coming back, but uh, Coach Mitchell, as long as he's here, I think we're in pretty good hands. In good hands indeed. And they bring home the bell, but unfortunately, don't go to a bowl. Well, that will do it for the Russell Roundup Fall 2010 edition. If you missed any of the games during the season or just want to share them with family and friends, you can watch them online through the Golden West website, gwcathletics.com video. It's been a pleasure of ours to be able to bring you wrestler sports this fall semester. I'm Rob Frecker, and on behalf of Victor, John, and Mario, and the entire crew here at Golden West College Video Production, thank you for watching. We wish you a safe and happy holidays. Good night.